All right, something I'm going to do that I hadn't planned on doing, but when I pulled that tray of elms apart, I started thinking about doing a shoheen size forest. So I spent a few minutes, took the cuttings out of the tray, and put a wire on almost all of them. I'm going to show you one and then I'm going to talk a little bit about placement and what I'm doing with the wire and why I'm doing it. So, I'm going to place the wire down along the trunk, spiral it up, and there's my new leader. It's going to gently coax him vertically. And this little piece of wire is going to act almost like a tripod to help me place them. Now someone somewhere quoted my instructor many years ago as saying that group planting becomes a forest when you have 10 trees in it. Uh, my instructor never accepted credit for that quote, doesn't know where it came from, but if people are going to give it to him, not much you can do about it. So I looked at one of my plastic training pots and realized that I've got about 13 cuttings there and I wasn't able to get the depth that I wanted so I've decided not to use that container. When I say depth I don't mean the depth of the container I mean the front to back depth uh, which I guess you would call width? No. No, depth. It's definitely depth. Um, so I've got two other training pots. This one's super deep. Mica uh, will uh, hold a ton of water made in Korea says it's a nine inch oval. I like it but it doesn't have that front to back depth that I want. This is another plastic container. I have no idea who made it, where it came from. Got it from the old suburban water gardens back in the day. Or it might even come out of Juson. I don't remember. But it's just a plastic training container. Enough for me to do my placement and get the plants where I want them. I'm using some old window screen, not nylon, vinyl, not sure, uh, to cover the drainage holes. You can use aluminum, you can use whatever you have laying around. Um, the point there is to let the moisture out, keep as many of the insects, let the moisture flow out, keep as many of the insects from climbing in as you can and allowing the container to breathe. Plastic holds on to far more moisture than unglazed ceramics. So in theory, I'll actually be able to go to work and not have to worry about this drying out in the course of a day because I'm using a peat moss based mix and a plastic container. A lot of people swear, oh, you can only use Akadama, you can only use Kanuma, blah, 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 blah. You want to start a fist fight at a bonsai club, go in and start talking about soils. Now when I'm doing a group planting, I want to grade the trees by the thickness of the trunk. Not so worried about the height because I can play games with the height. We're going to worry about where my branches emanate. This is obviously my number one tree. He's the tallest. Um, probably going to go right front with him or her or it because I assume they're capable of self-fertilization. Never really thought about that. All right, and then the next question is who is number two? So I can put number two with number one or I can start another group with number two. Whatever you do, your number one tree sets the tone for the planting and everybody else should be subordinate to it. Now my number one tree, if I'm going to create the illusion of depth front to back in the planting, needs to be towards the front of the container. I don't want the trees lined up in rows. should not look like you're at Rite Aid or Walmart or some other giant box store. Nothing should be lined up. And you always use 
uh, your crappy trees for a forest. And why is that? Well, because it breaks one of the rules of mathematics, which is that the sum is equal to the the whole is equal to the sum of its parts. Well, in bonsai, that's not the case. When you do a forest, the forest is greater than the sum of its parts. If you put ten great trees in one pot, you'd create one crappy forest. But if I put ten mediocre trees in the container, I can create one good forest. Now I'm paying attention to where the scar is in the back and I'm planting with the scar towards the rear of the planting. Now you want the roots to to knit together and you want your spacing to change in the front of the planting. They should be of outrageous planes from World War II and up into, I guess, the 70s. I'm not really sure. I've yet to visit there. I only drive past it on a regular basis. Isn't that always the case? You never stop to look at the stuff that's in your neighborhood, but you go out of your way to check it in somebody else's. I often equate doing a forest planting to the adult version of color forms if you guys remember that toy when we were kids where you could use electrostatic stickiness on those plastic pieces on that black plastic background and you can juggle them around. This is your chance to play. You don't have to uh, you don't have to leave them the way you arrange them. You can you can change your mind. And frankly, sometimes it's a good thing to change your mind. See, like that one's I don't know, he's a little out of place. Not sure what to do. I guess people are back to flying through the neighborhood. why I have left spirals of wire at the top of the tree many, 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 many years ago Pedro Morales was lecturing for the Bonsai Society of Greater New York and he taught us that in Puerto Rico the trees grow so rapidly that if he wires he has to extend the wires very shortly after he's wired a tree. So what he did was he started leaving these coils of wire at the top of the tree or at the end of branches so that he could uncoil the wire as the branch grew and then coax it into position. Well I thought that was quite a brilliant and neat idea and original until I read The Art of the Chrysanthemum by H. Carl Jung and Tameji Nak. Nakajima, and they were doing this 
with chrysanthemum bonsai back in the 1950s. So what's old is new again. Alright, so pulling that group slightly forward, pulling this group a little more to the left and forward. Now, I like to work with threes because it's very difficult to create squares with threes and squares and rectangles have uh, no movement. They're very static and I want the forest to have some movement. I don't want you to be able to see through it. I want you to be invited into it. So the biggest compliment I can ever get is when someone turns to me and says, oh my god, I just want to get in there and hike. And I've had a number of people say that to me over the years with different plantings that I've done. And to me, that's one of the biggest compliments I can get. Still not sure what to do with him. I can always take him out if I decide I don't like him. But in the meantime, he's going in. So we've got three, six, eight, got eleven trees. So we've hit the ten tree <laughs> definition that was attributed to my instructor. And now we're going to put in three, six, ten, number eleven, so that we uh, make all the people who freak out over odd numbers happy. I don't care if you have eight trees in a planting, which is a super important number for the Chinese, or if you have ten trees or eleven trees, it doesn't matter. What matters is that the arrangement has movement, it has depth, and you're not lining everybody up like soldiers. my instructor used to say. Product on the shelves. Should not look like you work retail. Okay, and now because I have everybody wired up, I'm going to have to be super diligent this spring to make sure that I don't wire scar all the trees. And I'm going to have to well, I don't have to, but since I have the wire in them, I have the option for creating some movement in the trees. So rather than make them all straight up and down, on an almost formal look, I can put some movement in the trunk shorter container would have been nice, but this is just for training purposes. Keep them moist and alive while they root their knits together. Hit <laughs> root their knits. Knits their knit their roots together. And then I gotta decide if I want to make it look like pine grouping, maple grouping, oak. really up to your imagination. My instructor used to say that your trees are like modeling clay. So you want to use them to express whatever it is you're feeling. Now comes the really exciting part where we water them in and then firm them up, put them on the shelf, and wait. Bonsai is all about hurry up and wait. You have certain operations that you need to get done at certain times of the year, and then after that, it's 
Keep them alive. So I try not to have the trunks crossing each other. The number one tree kind of sets the tone for the other trees, so I like to have sympathetic lines. This guy might be getting crowded out by that branch, so he's fighting over here looking for light. Invent any story.